Oh, or maybe it wasn't. I just thought it was that. Anyway. Fix, <clears throat> fix okay, Chris cool. and I started the recording. Okay, cool. All right. So for the people that are already here, it's it's start time of meeting, 10 o'clock my time, something horribly late for Natalie and horribly early for the Kers of the world. And super bad for anybody in Asia Packet. I'm sorry about that. But this is the uh, Snyder Ops interim meeting from October 1st. I'm going to do all the presenting. There'll be some question discussion time at the end. Um, there's an uncomfortable part in the middle. And uh, Kayer is going to take some notes. If you have questions, there's a chat in the WebEx. Please use that to uh, signal that you have a question. And I'll be happy to uh, entertain questions or comments during my uncomfortable speaking part. So the note well. Oh, the slides are posted, so if these are too small. My recommendation is go to the agenda or go to the meetings thing, download the meeting materials, and just follow along. So uh, we don't really have any administrivia. We don't really have any agenda bashing. We're going to go right to the uncomfortable part about discussions during the on the mailing list and during the meetings. I think. It seems like we need a reminder. Everyone needs a reminder once in a while. I had one of myself yesterday that the people involved in this work and this conversation, they've been doing this for a long time with the sole purpose to improve the security of the internet. We're not here trying to advantage ourselves or disadvantage others. Our whole point is to make the internet better, safer at the least. Um, and because of that, we need to, continually remind ourselves when we're reading somebody's email or listening to them talk that they're they're not the problem. The problem is the technical problem. And we need to focus on the technical problems, not on the personalities and 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 the people. And we need to be able to step back from the people and say, okay, I understand there's a technical problem. Let's deal with that. And that you're not trying to, you know, submarine me here or submarine the process or submarine the internet. Um, whenever discussions get into you know, sort of sniping at people or, or, or assuming that people are trying to do the wrong thing, I think we all end up you know, rat holing on that part of the problem and not on the technical part of the problem or discussion. And we should keep that in mind as people in discussion that we need to not rat hole on the wrong thing. We have a lot of other things we need to discuss mostly technical details and operations things. Why don't we stick to that, please? Uh, I also understand that at times the IETF process can be very long, very slow, or at least seem that way. And you know, I think there's some good parts to bad parts of that. It's, it's bad that it takes us a long time to get anything done. It's good that we spend a lot of time discussing and finding corner cases that we can either choose to deal with or choose to accept um, in the design. So. Second to last point about please, 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 your working mate, working group mates are here to improve the internet, not to break the internet or break the process or break you or or cause problems. And and there will be problems with all the things that we run in ops. We run into and find problems, and that's our job to find those, raise those, and get those fixed. And in particular in cyber ops, it's today in today's space, it's you know operating at scale. Uh, the CA system or the or the the RPKI system, and we found a number of things that have been not particularly great with the original, you know, implementation and design. And not by not great, I mean from an operations perspective. Like there's some things that I wish <laughs> I wish we had decided to be a little more consistent about in the beginning, so we wouldn't have this conversation now. But that's that's the way it is. Um, and I think as we you know we can look at any other ops groups in IETF that they're they're consistently. Lessons learned from the from the design to the operations phase, and that's what this group is here to do for CIDR, is to find the problems that are operational problems that were not necessarily foreseen in the original design work. Okay, before we move on to this slide, 
I'd be happy to entertain anybody's conversation about this or questions about this. So raise up your hand in the chat and let's get to it. Going once, twice. OK, we're going to skip on to the technical part of the conversation and the less uncomfortable part, I hope. So we've been through uh, a couple different rewordings um, from Steve's Steve's side of the fence for the the the, the 6486 biz re rewrite. There's been a bunch more discussion. I think the discussion in I summarized some of the discussion two nights ago. I think two nights ago in in email. And Tim Berniels has sent along some some response to that, which I didn't get a chance to read all of. Um, I think we're at the point where we need to say there's some things there's some things that we have agreed with this design to we've agreed to we've said yes we're definitely going to have some some publication points that are going to be uh going to have to get fixed right we're going to have to be a little more rigorous about what they do we've agreed that like because of this rigorous because of this rigor that there are some people who are going to fall off the map for a little while and that's okay if they fall off they fall off back to unknown ideally there are some cases, I think one of Tim's points in his email that I skimmed was there are some places where if you're a subtended CA, that if you fall off the map, you don't go to unknown, you go to invalid. And that's also sad, but I think that's something that we have to be willing to accept or we're going to have to find another discussion about how to fix that. But at least for right now, that's, that's sort of the point. There's also some conversation about rolling out new features in the existing CA tree, which Dr. Kent and Martin, and I think Tim spend much time discussing. It sounded like we sort of want to acknowledge in the biz document, maybe, this is a, a point of contention as well. Uh, we may want to acknowledge that like, yeah, it's going to be a little bit ticklish adding something new and or we should add something new by, by you know the, a basic process like X. Um, or pass that off to the new person and say, you're implementing something new, you got to figure out how to fit it into this box. I don't, right now, I don't care what the answer to that is. We should discuss that on the mailing list a little bit in a separate thread about, you know, how should we deal with this one particular topic? And the final thing, I think there's some push in the original design work, there was some push to kind of like make sure we keep everybody in this game as we go, which is almost in my mind, almost like Microsoft with, you know, Mike with MS-DOS, like, oh, we got to keep MS-DOS running. Just got to make sure all these things are still compatible, backward compatible forever. No. I think from an operations perspective, some of the conversation has been people need to upgrade their software. And if they don't, they're going to get left behind. And that's fine. They're not as secure. They're not as capable. They're not up to the current set of specific specifications. And it's something that we have to agree as a group that we're willing to drop the hammer on. We have to say, you know, you... You're going to have a year to get yourself updated. If you can't do it in a year, then you just, you probably just don't care. And it's okay that you fall off the map. You'll learn. Okay. So I think to move forward, there's at least three things we should, which I didn't put on the slide, and I'm sorry for that. There's three things we should discuss in separate threads. One is the discussion about rigor and what impact that may have. There's a discussion about you know how do we add new features to the RPKI if we have to. Um, and the third one is agreement that we're okay with dropping people who don't keep their software updated after some reasonable period of time. We could put that in the spec or say, you know, as a group, like, ah, we're going to need people a year. They got to get it done. Um, so there's that. There's the two points at the top of this slide, which talk about things that the working group, I think, and I'm putting some words in the working group's mouth here, but I think we've said, it's okay to break people if they can't keep their CA and publication point synchronized appropriately. And appropriately means to follow through the, through the, the repository collection changes that we're proposing in the biz document. Um, I think it also means that we're putting some pressure on the repository and maybe the CA folks. And by consequence, the, the developers of software to provide software that will pr produce this rigorous output. Um, 
And it may not be the case today that that happens, but it should be our goal from the document and from the working group's thought process here to generate a more rigorous output at the publication point because all the collectors are going to require that if we get on this path, I guess. Um, so I, I think I have two questions at the end here, which maybe Steve and his crew can mull over for a bit and the working group should mull over the first one. You know, How far do we think we are from the draft being finalized enough to send a working group last call and then push forward? And the second thing is, I understand that the editors are kind of doing this uh, on their free time uh, while they're not taking pictures of birds and whatnot. Uh, so are you are you okay doing this or do you need to push this work on to, you know, push this onto a third party? Do we need to have someone else in the working group pick up the, the XML and, and clean up the bits and pieces here and move it forward or are we okay? And I, my estimation is that we'll have like two more meetings like this slash face to face to face official ITF meetings before where our working group last call this document. So you're talking about six to nine months worth of more not taking pictures of birds time. Now, <clears throat> I'm done. So if you have any questions or comments, now would be the time. Hi, Chris, it's Steve. So uh, from my perspective, um, I do not have in hand specific concrete suggestions for how to accommodate the notion of transitioning to add new objects at publication points in an incremental fashion, not, uh, you know, providing the usual kind of backward compatibility that I agree with you doesn't go on forever. We have to set timeframes for it. Um, and so, <clears throat> if people feel it's critical to have that included in this document, then there needs to be a concrete proposal, not just suggestions of, oh, it needs to be available. Because I think there's a lot of discussion about how that's going to be done in our typical incremental and mostly backward compatible fashion. Um, so from my perspective, uh, we need to resolve on the current document the disagreements that have to deal with how strict we should be about kicking things out entirely in terms of saying that a given fetch has failed. And I think I refine the description of what that means reasonably well in the most recent iteration of the document. Uh, and noting, of course, that that means that we expect you to go back and try again later to see if people have fixed the things that caused it to fail. Um, I haven't heard my my impression from the previous rounds of discussions on the list and our last interim meeting and regular meeting um, was that we as a working group felt that it was important to get everything exactly right. And if it isn't exactly right, then we kick it and tell people that they need to fix it and a retry later should fix it. I will observe that I think we have a current gap in making this work properly because the Ghostbusters record is not a mandatory object. And frankly, I think it should be mandatory because if we're going to say that um, when you find a problem during a fetch and you alert an operator and the operator is expected to try and contact the people responsible to get them to fix it because they've discovered there's a problem, then there needs to be a Ghostbusters record available so that they know how to contact the folks to get it fixed. So I think this has been an oversight on our part and we should take some action um, to make Ghostbusters a mandatory publication point object in the future. Uh, in terms of my commitment to uh, continuing to edit it, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, my bird photography options have been flown away, shall we say, for the entirety of this year. I'm now up to um, 
four months worth of canceled trips. And I have a telecon tomorrow with the folks at Lindblad about the five-week epic Antarctic trip, which they're redoing because they think that New Zealand won't like us at the end and won't let us get off the ship. But I plan to make up for that next year. So, no, I don't commit to spending uh, more time in the name in the nature of not six to nine months the next three months sure maybe four but six to nine no so if somebody would like to take over and they think they can do a good job they can write well and clearly they are absolutely welcome to do so okay so i i think before the next person jumps in if there's a next person just so i'm i'm clear uh i agree that there isn't a concrete upgrade plan or, or addition to new objects plan and that you're proposing that we need to either decide to not work on that for this draft or we need to have somebody propose a concrete plan that we could agree or disagree and alter uh, that that seems fine to me that's that's my position yes okay and i agree the ghostbusters record is an interesting oversight that we made and it seems useful um i'm in the, in the general sense Adding mandatory things to the to the publication point seems fine to me right now. Like it, from the from the perspective of this draft, like if there's something we should add, we should we should certainly do that. And if there's a good reason to do it, it seems like it's a no brainer. Um, so that seems fine. Um, and documenting there is some mention, at least in the the slide deck that I have about you know, we need to mention what we we know the side effects of this are going to be. And I think that was one of the points that both Tim and um, Martin brought up was that, you know, hey, you guys know you're going to break some people here, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's the point. We know we're going to break some people. Um, and the last point about uh, continuing on. So essentially, maybe until December, you're happy to, to truck on. But at, but at December, we need to hand, either be done or hand off to a third person. And that's, that's fine. I'm, I'm just making sure that we're, that that's what you're saying. Uh, yeah, actually, it could go into January, but end of year is a nice, convenient stopping point. Okay, that's that was why I was aiming for December, because <laughs> the end of the calendar year is easy for people to rationalize. Was that D? Nobody else. Anybody else? Tim raised, Tim raised his hand in the chat. Hi. Oh, yeah. Can I just talk? Hi. Um, I think on the content side, it's best to discuss um, through the mailing list, probably. Um, but look, indeed, Martin and I have been pointing out, and, and uh, other people as well, I believe that some of the repercussions of this might be that um, state will not just go to not found for certain CAs, it can actually go to invalid. If the working group says that that is acceptable, then actually personally I can live with that, but I think it should be made clear because I don't want people to be surprised uh, you know, as to what the consequences are. With regards to the, um, how do we deal with new object types? Um, I'm quite happy to have a uh, focused discussion on just that point. Uh, and again, I think if we can't solve it now, and if the working group says we accept that we can't solve it, that should also be made clear. But my preference would be to end up, to, to come to a resolution where we can actually agree on a way forward there. Um, because I think that would just be much, much better. Um, so on that point, I sent you know, this morning, well, my morning, your, I don't know what your time is, but, um, so maybe we can follow up on that and, and focus on, you know, the technical issues at hand, let's say, because all in all, I think there's been a lot of discussion on this, but I honestly believe that. In the end, everybody has the goal of making everything better, just as you said, Chris. So I think if we keep the focus on that, we can actually move things forward. 
Okay. That's it for me. Thank you. Okay. So I, I think uh, that sounds terrific, by the way. I think, can we either I'll, I'll start a new thread for the new, you know, how to introduce a new type into the process uh, and a new thread for the repercussions discussion. Or Tim or Steve could do that too. I don't really care, but I'll do something at the end of today if there isn't something, end of my day, which is going to be six hours from now or eight hours from now. Um, I, I want to observe, I did have the opportunity to read Tim's message from yesterday, and my understanding of the two examples he gives of cases that could cause invalid don't seem to have anything to do with manifest processing. Okay, so, I mean, it sounds like we should take his two examples and, and, and put those into the discussion, separate discussion, and say, okay, well, you know, here's some examples of repercussions and where do these cause the problem or where did this problem come from? Like, is this because we're processing the manifest and we toss stuff out or is this because somebody upstream got tossed out and now my, now my subordinate CA is lost in the system? Um, and again, I didn't read this. So I don't know what his, his two things are and I apologize for that, but I, that sounds like we should take that to the mailing list as a separate discussion. Um, Fine with me. Yeah, okay. Works for me. And you raise your hand. Me? You're the only Warren here, buddy. I couldn't hear you started talking for unmuted. Anyway, thanks, Warren Kamari. Um, I just want to mention that if we do do anything which looks like a breaking change, it's not just us that needs to know. We should make sure that we, you know, get the word out on various mailing lists, etc., so that people aren't surprised. It would be sad if you know we're not surprised, but <laughs> various people who are using this are. And that's a pretty obvious thing, but mentioned. And Nick, you can hear me, Chris. Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Steve, and uh, for uh, anyone else who can respond on this, um, for the new objects, uh, I'm thinking we mean things like uh, the ASPA, and then more recently, uh, at the last IETF, I proposed uh, an, a new object uh, called REAP, REAP, uh, for AS uh, hijack uh, detection. So I assume those are the kinds of new objects uh, we are talking about. My question is, do we need just a general framework under which uh, th that we need to agree on uh, for this draft? Uh, under that framework, uh, we would be able to add new objects or do we need to finalize what the new objects are? Well, my, my assumption was that the whole discussion about new objects is in the future, somebody may dream up a new thing. How are they gonna jam that into the box? So we already know what ASPA is kind of shapely. We we sort of understand a little bit about REAP. There's also, um, George Michelson had a discussion about, I forget the name of his object, but the separate thing that's not necessarily dependent upon the RPKI itself, just uses the TAs. All of that is a generic, like add a new thing to the box conversation. So I, I think it's the general case we care about. Uh, I mean to ask, um, uh... It's not necessary that uh, though the actual details, the, the technical details of those objects have to be finalized before this draft gets published. It is, I'm assuming that it is just that uh, there is a general framework that is built into the document, which enables uh, the creation of uh, these new objects that you just mentioned, or maybe future uh, proposed new ones. Uh, am I am I right in understanding that uh, this document doesn't require that whatever objects we need uh, going forward, they need to be finalized before this document can be final? Or, or am I right in thinking that it's just a framework to include new objects on an ongoing basis, and that is what we need? This it's the second. It's the framework. Okay. So, or no, sorry. I thought I heard somebody else. Okay. So 
Any other comments or questions? We have 35 minutes of fun time left. Or alternately, we can all go back to work. Or beer in the Netherlands. <laughs> um, can I? Please. So, plus Q, but <laughs> so I want to comment a bit on the uh, invalidation. And, and, and with regards to new object types. Section 6.7 says, field fetches, if an RP does not require a current valid manifest or does not acquire current valid instances of all of the objects enumerated in the current valid manifest, et cetera, then it's a field fetched. Um, so that implies that all the objects there have to be valid and validatable. And that's why new object types would create an issue here. This is also why in my example, I mentioned if resources are added to a CA and they use them before the parent manages to publish their certificate, well, then they would create something that has resources that are not yet known. So that object would be invalid. So you have one invalid object, therefore the whole thing is invalid. Um, <clears throat> so, Hopefully that clarifies a bit where I'm uh, coming from here. And what I meant by, if you would loosen this, well, with regards to new object types, you could consider whether object types are actually orthogonal to the thing that we care about or not. We can have that discussion later again, and it probably we should. Um, but hopefully that makes it a bit more clear. The, Resource transfers, unfortunately, are a bit of a hairy problem. I would like to pursue updates to the 6492 um, protocol so that a child CA at least can understand before a resource is removed that they should clean up in an automated way. And similarly, that they can understand when new resources will be safe to use. I don't think that will solve everything, but it, it is possibly a part of the solution of, to this, uh, you know, to this puzzle. So, yeah, hopefully that clarifies okay. a bit. Thanks. That was good, yes. Next person. Or we could go get beer. Just saying. Okay. Wine. Yes. I know which one Chris is pushing for. Did you have something to say, Steve, or, or, or we're, we're set? I was saying wine, maybe beer, definitely oh. not. Yeah. Okay. Great. I'll join so, you with wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay. I think if there's nothing else, then I'll make some emails appear on the list unless somebody beats me to it uh which i might just copy and paste some of tim's email actually uh and we can discuss the three items on the list and ideally um i think that the the first question how far are we from the or sorry the, the second question how far are we from the current draft being success is we need to conclude those three topics, and then we can send it out for, uh, well, update the document and send it out for for a discussion point again. Um, so that's that. And if there's somebody or set of somebody's who is willing to pick up the pen from Steve in December, please uh, chit chat to Steve and send email to the chairs so we know they won't get lost, All right? Last call for anything else? Three, two, one. All right, time to go. Thanks very much, everybody, for coming. Sorry for the uncomfortable beginning. Thank you for the discussion at the end. Bye.